Hey guys, it's Vince. Today I want to discuss a package I've been thinking about for quite some time, um, and it's taken me quite some time to actually put it together because I was thinking about everything that would be required and exactly which path I wanted to go. And that package is a breakout board. I get questions on breakout boards all the time for different applications. And I work with numerous types, and for the end user who wants something simple, um, who's looking at a business supported system, or again, a system that can cross over from hobby to business, or even for that matter, a guy that is you know honest with himself on his own electrical uh, applications as far as being able to support the system by himself, or anybody for that matter, I wanted something that was extremely simple, easy to maintain in the field. Um, one of the things I think that's overlooked when it comes to CNC in general, especially what you're seeing online, um, is the fact that no one discusses maintenance. No one discusses when parts fail, how to troubleshoot until they actually receive the unit and then they troubleshoot. The big thing that you'll find in CNC is that everybody feels they can build a machine, but building a machine is only part of it. Once the machine is built and assembled, just the parts assembled, you did fine up until you run into your first quirk and that's where troubleshooting in the field has to come into play. If you're, if you're actually utilizing individual drives, the breakout board itself can be one hell of a, an animal to dissect in the sense of you going through and validating everything. And you're gonna see, you look at this board, it's very simple, there's no relays, there's nothing confusing on this board. It's a DB25 breakout board, it supports six axis. Um, what you see here with the terminal splitters, and you can see the green wire, which signifies ground. It's the, it's the common ports on the board. The reason you see the terminal splitters on those ports is because, like most breakout boards, there's only one ground on each side. You have ground for your actual drivers, and on this side, you also have the ground for the inputs, which would be for your e-stop and home switches, if you choose to use them. You know most of my feelings on limit switches that they're not required because, again, the software itself, whether it be Mach 3, UCC and C software, either one of them for motion control, both support soft limits, which far exceed the safety of any mechanical switch that will eventually fail in the field. Um, I'm one of the few guys that actually talks about that because for some reason um, I've dealt again with full-scale equipment and I've dealt with it in, in um, you know crashes in real full-scale environments and I'm going to tell you right now um, a $200,000 machine crashing is no different than your couple thousand or five thousand ten thousand dollar machine crashing in the sense that you know, it's still going to be a heartbroken experience. You know, big companies can export, usually afford a crash like that a hell of a lot better than you can. So keep that in mind when I always talk about using soft limits. If the software goes down, if the computer crashes, your machine will stop moving. There will not be a crash. Okay, but if that switch fails and you're using a, a, a mechanical switch to actually protect the machine with limits, I'm telling you now, you're not gonna be happy with the end result, especially if the motors are large. So please keep that in mind. That being said, I wanted the board that was very, very simple. I think I've accomplished that. This board I use in commercial grade systems. I use it in base, in uh, hobby based systems. It really doesn't matter what the application is. Um, the control is super smooth. It is an opto isolated board, so you're set there. Um, it does support DB25, and the reason I like DB25 is you can use a UC100 convert this board from a parallel port right into a USB port so that you would have the functionality of Windows 7, Windows 10, Windows 8, 32-bit, 64-bit operating systems, only Windows-based. Um, and again, for the guys that don't have the budget and still want to go archaic uh, devices, you can always go parallel port and have a dedicated system for your machine, and you're good to go. So it supports both budge budgets and overall very very simple design. Um, a lot of guys ask me why is it that I do not include or I don't like relays and accessories on motherboards or breakout boards for that matter. I always call them motherboards. Please excuse me. Um, realistically, anything added on a board that fails is one component that will usually require the entire system to either have a problem or require you to go through and service the unit and that means either changing the unit or once again trying to troubleshoot without catching your tail of what that dead device is. Remember something, the more you put into a board that you're by yourself with and you're not confident 100% of your own abilities, and guys I'm telling you right now, 
until you've actually gone through a CNC, not just built and assembled the parts. That's the easy part. It's when you encounter a problem that you find out, are you able to troubleshoot it by yourself? 98% of the troubleshooting questions I get are guys by themselves, regardless of if they own a business, regardless of you know their their electrical background. I've asked I've answered questions from engineers and Fortune 500s down to you know general hobbyists. Does not matter your background. Does not matter you know no one's no one's questioning your competency as far as uh, the electrical pattern that you're dealing with. What we comp what we actually question is the fact that this is a different entity when you're by yourself. Typically, there's a high, it's a high stress environment. You're getting, you know, everything set up. You're excited. By the time you encounter a problem, now you're frustrated. You have to go through and start dismantling things. It's a headache. And believe me, anyone who's done it and anyone who owns one of these machines will tell you it's tedious as hell. Okay, I've done it with full scale machines, and that's why you see what you see before you because I wanted to incorporate a design that I know will work without a, d a doubt if for virtually anybody as long as they understand what they're getting. And why I say that, this is not a $400 board. This is not going to have, like I said, multiple relays and all kinds of other inputs. You got 43 inputs and this, we're not launching the space shuttle and we're not trying to reinvent a Haas mill. Okay. I find that guys forget that that old simplistic stupid term which I've already covered in a video it really should be executed as much as possible when you're on your own because even if you like I said if you're good at electronics even if you you work with it if you're an engineer whatever it may be you need to realize that when something goes wrong and it's always at the worst possible time you want to be able to have as little downtime as possible because if you have a business it could be catastrophic and usually is because anyone will tell you it usually happens at the worst possible time so overall very simple board no relays no extra anything you do have home switch inputs okay and again you do have on the input side you have one ground as well which you see another splitter okay splitters are to be used guys so you prevent daisy chaining on your drivers and on your switches so on an e-stop if all you're hooking up is an e-stop and you're not going to use home switches you certainly don't need the splitter however if you are going to use home switches you will need the splitter so that you can split the ground to all your switches very very simple now you can use a splitter on virtually any breakout board in order to encompass more switches or expand it in any way required now a lot of guys don't think like that I'm telling you because I do this all the time sometimes it's necessary and again most breakout boards when it comes to inputs they only have a single ground or in this case they have two grounds on each side of the board one for inputs and again one for our drivers and that's what you're actually seeing there but I again a lot of questions come in when you see one ground on the driver's side if you're hooking up hell if you're hooking up even one drive you're good if you're hooking up six or three or four <clears throat> you're gonna have four different commons coming into this one terminal which everyone knows daisy chaining or everyone should know daisy chaining is unacceptable when you're doing any type of CNC wiring okay we're not just trying to get the job done we want to get it done right these are the people I'm talking to I'm addressing and again this is what we're trying to do once again that's why the terminals are included again 20 gauge silicone wire optimal flexibility optimal heat resistance and again these terminals guys are commercial grade you take this you can use circle clip um, I've used circle clips and you can also use standard just plug and play wiring and you can do your little tin action you can do that I've had guys want to use for rules whatever you decide you want to use you're good overall very simple in design the other thing you're going to require regardless of your breakout board is a 5 volt power supply and you see how small this little guy is it doesn't have to be big uh, 5 volt power supply is required to give the unit power the unit does have an integrated LED which will illuminate once it receives power you're good to go the other items that will be required okay you can see our hardware we've got our four half inch standoffs our 632 nuts and number six washers and the reason we only have those and not the actual screws is why I'll tell you why it's because I don't know what substrate you're mounting it in. I don't know the thickness, so therefore there's no way I can give you a screw size. However, I basically top the icing on the cake by giving everything else required. Of course, our standoffs and nylon to keep the board from actually making contact with the base chassis, which most likely will be a metal strut substrate because if you're using wood or plastic, uh, plastic is semi-okay. Wood is a fire hazard. I would never, ever, 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 did I say ever, use wood uh, as a chassis mount. So please, guys, if you're doing that, 
don't do that okay 48 volts dc uh 12 volts whatever it may be five volts anything could start a fire especially when you're dealing with a 110 in anything can happen that's why i tell you guys always use think ahead you know even though this looks like low voltage on most of the items it does not mean that there's not a potential fire hazard so we think ahead the last probably one of the most important parts of this whole package is our wiring diagram now I'm going to show you. Let me just adjust the camera here. Now, this wiring diagram is made on my ProGrade vinyl. Okay, ProGrade glossy vinyl laminated in 8518 Scotch Cal uh, 3M glossy laminate used by NASCAR. It's the same stuff they do graphics with, guys. And I can tell you right now, waterproof, uh, humidity proof, UV proof. Uh, it's got an eight-year warranty. This decal will most likely last longer than your system under most circumstances. Um, that being said, uh, the unit's actually very, very easy to wire. If you look at this diagram, I wanted to make it as utterly simple as possible. You got your 5 volt power supply input there. You can see where I even explained splitter terminals are used to split the common for all your drivers to prevent daisy chaining on ground terminals. This must be done to wire your drivers correctly. And you can see you've got it on both sides. So again, in your input side for any type of optional switches and over here. Now, if you wanted to expand a switch, like I discussed before, if you only have, you know, you got 13, 12, 11, and 10, of course, is for our e-stop, and then you've got 15. If you want to change this out and you want to do it to where, again, you want to expand your switches, you can always use a terminal splitter and put all your switches on one, and that'll leave actually all those other terminals for whatever items you want to go with okay and the idea of that is not to make things complex it's to make what's known as a subsystem i get questions on subsystems all the time a subsystem is where you isolate an entire system from another and the idea of that is done again in full scale machines most of the time when it can be done so that if you do have to troubleshoot you don't have to sit there and actually throw out an entire part where if you had a relay integrated on this board and it went bad odds are most of the board will be bad as well if if you have a subsystem with a relay if the relay gets bad pull out that subsystem with the relay pop it new one in and you're set to go and that's the idea is to eliminate downtime again i'm not talking about the guy who's looking at just plugging and going I'm talking about the future here. I'm talking about your system's integrity over the long term. That is why I designed this. Now, as far as covering wiring patterns, one thing you'll notice here, you've got X, Y, Z, A, B, C. These are all the six potential drivers that you'll be hooking up. You can see I even gave you guys green wire direction, white wire step for step and direction signals from your actual drivers. Now, most of the time when you're reading all this, it's convoluted when you're trying to sit there at night, whenever the time it is, you may have gotten off of work, you're doing your wiring on your system, hopefully when you're rested, I'm hoping. And uh, a lot of guys complain, you know, these diagrams, they get confusing. And they're right, they do. And it, it confuses me sometimes with all the wiring diagrams that are out. And so what I did is I angled it. And the reason I angled it is so that you can come over here with, a, you know, a little post-it note. And you can segregate each drive that you want to wire at a time. So you can see it this way, which makes things a lot easier for you to go through your system and wire each drive accordingly. Okay? And of course, this being a decal, once you're done wiring the breakout board for your system, you can then apply it to your chassis or in a, in a centralized location so you always have it to cross-reference with. Okay? Common logical sense, again, I've yet to see it done, so therefore I'm doing it. It needs to be done. I mean, it needs something. Uh, I think we all need something as cross reference. I wish something like this was out when I first got involved. <laughs> Again, uh, it just makes things easy. And that's really the big thing here. We're looking at simplicity, we're looking at logic, and this just keeps everything on the same page, you know? So again, if you're wiring uh, a typical three axis, a two axis, I have guys that want to do lathe conversions. Um, this system will basically suit virtually anybody needing more than one axis. Actually, one axis and above, you're still good to go. Again, it supports six. If you're only doing three, and again, I use this in my six axis chassis, you can use three for now and then decide later on. If you decide you want to upgrade, you're good to go as well as that. So that's something to think about. Overall, that was my whole intention when putting a package together is that I know 
most of the guys when they buy a breakout board they think they're done then all of a sudden they find out well the, the board is limited the ground there's only one ground on the board yet i'm supposed to hook up you know multiple drivers to one common on the board how do i do that guess what you're gonna have to buy all these accessories guys i'm telling you that right now the longer you study and the longer you go through things you're gonna find out in this industry nothing is kitted it's always piece by piece by piece and they get you every time and to me that's ridiculous we all know what you're going to need i know explicitly what you're going to need and again i try to encompass it here i'm offering it at a, a i think a very fair price considering what you're getting because i can tell you right now no one includes a wiring diagram graphic that can be applied to your actual chassis um, the wiring i'm giving you two feet of the silicone wiring this way you'll have enough uh, to, to actually do your terminals. And again, you can cut it to length. Each system is different. Um, the only thing you will have to supply again is a 632nd screw simply because, like I said, you don't know, I don't know what chassis you're mounting in this end. If it's quarter inch thickness, if it's half inch thickness, who knows? Everybody knows that the chassis vary, but you are gonna require standoff, especially if we're doing it right. And again, five volt power supply, this is an integrated system, you're ready to go. The only other thing that will be included is your db25 standard uh pass-through cable male male end um you'll be good with that and then of course if you decide that you want to go uc100 we can add that in for the guys that want to convert this entire package to a usb system so again whole package totally encompassing i think everybody here sees the logic and once again i do apologize i didn't release this sooner but it's been something that's been irking me and i've got a lot of balls in the air right now so i'm just trying to you know keep my head above water again i'm the one man show so but uh for every guy that i've talked to lately you guys have been wonderful all the support you guys have been wonderful uh and i can't tell you how much i I really appreciate you all. Appreciate you all. And uh, again, I, I definitely will be doing more videos. And I hope this video finds someone out there before they go and purchase, you know, a standard board at least to show them what they really need. Because this is exactly what they're going to need. Regardless if you buy this board, odds are you're going to need terminal splitters um, at one point or another. They will come up. You're going to need the standoffs. You're going to need the power supply. If you have all this, a lot of guys are going into PC power supplies, guys. I'm telling you right now, look at the size of this unit. It's tiny, it's about as big as the board. When you factor in that you're using a PC power supply and then you have to wire that in, nine out of 10 times, this is your best friend. It generates a lot less heat. And again, you're looking at uh, two to three amps of draw current as far as what's available on the actual supply. I believe I'm gonna do a three amp. Um, overall, it's a very, very simple design. Um, actually, I stand corrected. They're two amp because the board itself is like uh, I think it's 200 milliamps that the unit actually pulls. So we're talking no current draw. But again, think of the heat. I always tell guys that when you're doing a real, uh, a really intricate design, especially when you're wiring in a lot of drivers, you always want to think of the cooling. The more you put in the box, heat becomes excessive, and all of these little items, believe it or not, add up. Especially when you're talking the larger power supply, using 5 volt for the breakout. You go to 48 volt, you go to 72, depending upon what you go. I, I told you guys, I use this in prograde systems all the time. You hit 72 volts, you're going to see some serious, serious heat when you start having PC power supplies and everything else. That ambient heat can cause issues. So again, the package I try to make all encompassing and I hope that through this video, I've educated you a little more and made you feel a little more confident as far as what's available out there. If you guys have any questions, once again, my name is Vince. Um, I'm the owner and engineer in eDealers Direct. Uh, my email is storm, S-T-O-R-M, 2313 at gmail.com. Uh, again, if you need anything, just let me know. And you can also message me through YouTube. I'm getting a lot more messages through there. I'm doing my best to try to keep up, so please bear with me. And uh, once again, I thank you all for your support. Take care.